Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. We're done. In the books. All right. Hi, my name's Daryl Peterson, and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at Micromeasurements. This afternoon, I'm with my friend Rick Brummel, who works for our sister company, uh, BLH. And Rick and I are going to go through the process of installing a strain gauge onto this uh, printed circuit board assembly. Uh, this printed circuit board assembly has a variety of components on it, and we're going to pick a location on this board and kind of demonstrate how you go through that process of putting a very small strain gauge uh, onto a location on, the, on this uh, printed circuit board. Now, the strain gauges that we're going to use is some new strain gauges uh, from Micromeasurements. And these new strain gauges, I'll open the box here and, and show them to you. These new strain gauges are a three element uh, stacked rosette. And as I take it out, see if I can get the wires out of there. Yeah, thank you, Rick. Welcome. Ah, perfect. So this is a uh, three element stacked rosette. It's got a very small uh, circular trim. And one of the new things about this strain gauge is the construction of it. So this gauge has a transition between the grids down to this ribbon cable of this uh, flex circuit. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it out of the, the little sleeve. So what this allows you to do is glue the strain gauge down into little tight spaces on the printed circuit board assembly, and then use this flexible circuit to get back and transition over to these ribbon wires. And these ribbon wires are what you'll take and connect into like a strain indicator or a data acquisition system like our system 9000 uh, that can take the measurements from this small uh, three element stacked rosette. Fantastic. Well, hey, being a load cell guy, this is pretty exciting. You know, <laughs> I don't know much about strain gauges, so it's going to be very um, informative, and um, I'll learn something from you, I'm cool. sure. Cool, cool. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to get started, and we're going to use the MBON 200 uh, to adhere the gauge, and we've got some MCOAT C we'll use as a protective coating. Uh, just as a reminder, the MBON 200 is a cyanoacrylate adhesive, uh, very quick setting, very commonly used for putting strain gauges on uh, printed circuit board assemblies. And the MCOAT C is a silicone rubber. Uh, this is what we'll use as a protective coating over top of the gauge once we get it installed. But we're gonna install this gauge at a location uh, that's kind of tight right in here between these uh, surface mount, I don't know if you can see that that well, Rick, but between these surface mount resistors and this little integrated circuit, we're gonna try to target right at that little spot just to kind of illustrate how you can do this with these uh, very small stacked rosettes. Great. So I'd say let's get started. All right, let's do it. Okay, so the first step for installing a strain gauge onto this printed circuit board assembly uh, is to degrease it. And what we're gonna use to degrease it is the uh, M-Line GC6, which is just a isopropyl alcohol. It's basically a pure form of alcohol. And what I'm gonna do is take a small gauze pad and just kind of fold that in half and kind of fold it again so it kind of keeps the solvent in it. And I'll open it up and put a little bit of solvent into the gauze pad. And I'm just trying to clean off this small little area uh, where the gauge is gonna be installed. You know, sometimes you could get a little bit of dust and things like that on it, or maybe it's some oils from someone handling this board. Um, but just trying to do a little bit of cleaning in that area. It's kind of, there's it's so tight that it's kind of hard to get in there. But you just kind of wipe it down the best you can with a little bit of that, that uh, isopropyl alcohol. And then we'll give it just a second here for the remaining parts of it to evaporate. It's really that simple and that easy. And then the next step, I'm gonna take some silicon carbide paper. This is a 400 grit silicon carbide paper. Uh, and all we're trying to do is kind of scuff the surface. We're trying to take a little bit of that shine off of it. And basically that means you're giving it a little bit of texture for the adhesive to kind of bite to it. So I'll just tear off about an inch and a half piece of the silicon carbide paper. I'm gonna fold it and fold it kind of small so I can get in there. So I'm gonna assume, Daryl, that this process is for any type strain gauge application installation. Well, yeah, for the most part, this is pretty similar. Uh, on metals, we use a solvent that's a little more aggressive. Uh, it's it's the CSM type solvents. Uh, we've changed them several times over the years, but 
Uh, those solvents are a little more aggressive than isopropyl, but I don't really like to use them on printed circuit board assemblies because they are a little more aggressive. And I think isopropyl alcohol usually works uh, fine. The other thing you'll find with putting strain gauges on printed circuit boards is you're starting off, you know, from a pretty cleaned object. It's sure, not like sense. you're, you know, it's not like you're putting a strain gauge on a garbage truck or something, you mm -hmm. know, that's got a lot of debris and mud and dirt and whatever else on it. So I'll just take that and kind of scuff it a little bit and you can kind of see there where it's uh, been scuffed. And then I'll take another gauze pad and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I'll just wipe it down again. Uh, just to get a little bit of that debris off that, that we introduced. And then I'll look at it and make sure once the, the remaining bits and of the isopropyl alcohol have evaporated, it should be dull compared to the surface that's around it. And it is. Yeah, I think we can see that, right? So that simple and that easy. Now the next step, uh, so, so far we've degreased it with the alcohol, a light abrasion, uh, then we went back and degreased it again. And the last step that I'm going to use is uh, this MPREP neutralizer. This is an ammonia-based solution. And I'll just use, we only need a couple of drops of it. But what this will do is make sure the surface is at the right pH for the cyanoacrylate adhesive. Uh, they are very sensitive to pH. So it's always good to make sure you kind of follow things up right here at the end with a little scrub with neutralizer. Uh, the ammonia will, if the pH was low, for example, with a cyanoacrylate adhesive, a lot of times they don't want to bond. So that'll help to bring that uh, pH up. You've been doing this for a while, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, maybe a year or two. <laughs> All right, we'll just clean it. And I'll just use another gauze pad, a clean one, and just kind of, this is water-based, so it'll stick around a little longer. So I'll just try to pick up whatever's left. And really, Rick, at this point, I think we're looking pretty good. So really we can focus on the strain gauge now and just take this board and, and push it to the side and focus on getting the gauge uh, ready for installation. So the next thing I'm gonna do is find a piece of glass. And this is what I'm gonna use to position the strain gauge and get it ready for bonding. And the first thing we need to do is uh, clean it. And I like to use a little bit of neutralizer uh, on the glass to clean it off. So I'll put a couple of drops on it. Take another gauze pad and just kind of wipe the surface. You know, you're just trying to make sure there's no dust on it because now you're going to take the gauge and you're going to kind of lay it onto this. So you want to make sure it's nice and clean. That's a great thing about glass. You know, I can pick it up and kind of turn it uh, and you can see if it's got something on it. And if it does, clean it off. This one looks pretty good. So the next step is really just to take the strain gauge and we will lay it onto the piece of glass. What I'm really gonna focus on is just getting that small area of the strain gauge installed uh, on the printed circuit board assembly. It's gonna be a little tricky to do that because it is such tight space, uh, but we'll use a little bit of adhesive and um, We'll get it on there, but first thing I'm going to do is to put a piece of tape on it because I'm going to, I want to use the tape to help uh, position the gauge in place. And if I take it and I pull this printed circuit board assembly back over, what I'm thinking is we'll orient it like this. So it'll be coming out sort of that through that little window, if you will, uh, between that IC and that surface mount resistor. I'm going to assume, Daryl, that this is one of the smaller strain gauges that is produced here at Micro Measurements. It actually it is. This one it's called a G1350A. That's the gauge pattern, and the G1350 uh, is one of the smallest ones we make. It's got a trim diameter of about five millimeters, so it's really small, and it's got an active gauge length. They're kind of hard to see actually. They're so small but uh, an active strain gauge length of uh, 31 thousandths of an inch. So they're really small grids, and again, stacked on top of each other in this little small circular pattern, really so that you can get it into like little small areas uh, for bonding. 
So now that I've kind of compared that, what I'm gonna do is lay this gauge back on the piece of glass. And one of the things I'm gonna to do now is use our gauge installation tape. It comes on this big roll, but this gauge installation tape is what I'm gonna to use to help prepare and position the strain gauge on the glass and then therefore be able to transfer it over to the um, cleaned area on the printed circuit board assembly. So this is where it gets it can get a little bit tricky, but what I'm gonna do is just try to capture the very edge of the strain gauge. I'll try to scooch it under there a little bit. Scooching is a technical term, by the way. So I'm gonna leave the rest of this where I can move it around. Now one of the great things you'll notice about this flex circuit is that it is just that, it's flexible. So if I want to, I could take it, bend it back over top of itself. I could bend it this way. I could bend it this way. I got a bunch of different options now when it comes to positioning that strain gauge on that printed circuit board as far as how I want to run the wires out. Now, you might find applications where you want to glue the gauge down and you want to glue parts of this flex circuit down, or you leave it uh, to where you can move it and then you position it in place. Gotcha. So for here, since what I'm going to do is focus on getting the gauge in the right spot, and then we'll we'll route the wires, and uh, you could either just use a little bit of environmental coating to hold it down, or we could use some more uh, Inbond 200 to hold it down too. All right, so that looks good. So we're actually ready to lift this off the piece of glass. I'm going to take this tape and just kind of fold it back like that and lift it up at a shallow angle and the gauge wants to come with it, which is good. And I'll take this printed circuit board, pull this thing back around. <clears throat> other than putting a strain gauge on a printed circuit board, what would be some of the other applications, Daryl, for this type of strain gauge? Wow, that is a, that is a great question, Rick. Um, hang on just a second, and we'll see if I can get this guy in its place. Yeah, so the idea here is to try to get the, the gauge in place where you want it on the tape. And then all we have to do is kind of lift the tape, apply the adhesive, the, actually the catalyst first, then the adhesive, and then bond it back down. So let me show you that. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Um, great question. You know, where do we see these gauges used? Um, three element stacked rosette should be used whenever you're not sure of the principal directions of strain. Uh, or those principal directions of strain will change under load, like given different inputs. So in, in general, if you don't know direction of principal strain or it's gonna change, that's when you should use a three element rosette. When you start using small stacked ones like this, it's because you've got very localized stress concentrations. You know, it could be a part is cracking. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you'll actually have evidence that there's an overstressed condition and if it's cracking in particular, it means you've got a very localized stress concentration. So if you know where that starts, this is the type of gauge to use. Uh, also, if you have very limited real estate, you know, maybe you're putting a strain gauge next to a hole in a part or maybe um, next to a weld, you know, any sort of change in geometry, then you might want to start thinking about using these very small ones. Okay, great. Uh, like in this case, we just have a very limited amount of space. Now, sometimes on applications like this, you actually take the components off. Now, in this case, we're not going to do that, and we don't have to do that because the gauge uh, is quite small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the tape is kind of pressed down in all the other areas because the tape is going to help guide me to get the gauge back in the right spot. So I'll just kind of push that down. And I think what I've decided to do, I'm gonna peel the tape back towards me and then we'll put a little catalyst on it and then we'll put the adhesive on it and we'll bond it back in place. So to do that, I'm, all I'm gonna do is lift the tape, again at a shallow angle, uh, peel it back. Sometimes I like to, to just kind of stick it back, see if we can get it to stay. And this is our catalyst, this is the uh, the Inbond 200 Catalyst. We're gonna use this first. Always shake it up a little bit before you use it. And with this Catalyst, less is more. So what I like to do is put the vast majority of it back in the bottle by touching the inside parts of the bottle. I do that about 10 or 12 times. Is there a reason why it's micro-measurement blue? 
You know, a bunch of years ago, it used to be green, and we switched it to blue when we went to uh, using isopropyl alcohol as a carrier. It used to be trichloroethane, so it was green, and you only need to put on a very thin film. I don't, I don't know how well you could see that, but if you see it wet the surface, that's enough. The thing to remember about this catalyst is that it's about 98% solvent. It's the 2% that you want to leave behind, and whenever you put it on real heavy, you know, a lot of customers want to think more is better, and that's actually not true. You're putting on more solvent, and that keeps the cyanoacrylate from bonding. So you just put a little bit on mm -hmm. and uh, let it air dry, and typically we give it a full minute to air dry. And then once you do that, you're really ready for the adhesive. That's a great thing about using M-Bond 200 is literally you can bond strain gauges in a matter of just a few minutes as opposed to having to wait for epoxy-based adhesives uh, to cure. So we're kind of waiting our one minute. Now, what I'm going to do since we waited our one minute, and most of the time what I like to do is apply the adhesive outside of the area and then wipe it down into place. But on something like this, that's really hard to do. So what I'm going to do is put a drop of adhesive over here where I'm going to put the strain gauge. I'm going to pull it over, and then we're going to try to wipe it down into place ever so slightly. And then I'm going to put my thumb on it, and I'm going to keep it on there for a minute. So that goes kind of quick, but you put a little bit of adhesive on it, and then you need to, to get it into a thin film. So this is the part of the process where you got to kind of move quick. Once you've applied a drop of the cyanoacrylate, you're basically committed. So you've got to, you got to get to moving. And we want to give it a full uh, 60 seconds. And we're going to wait our 60 seconds. And then we let it sit for two more minutes, and then we can take the tape off. But at this point, basically, you're, you know, you've got the adhesive curing. Um, you know, the, the strain gauge already has the wires on it. So really, you know, you're 90% of the way done when you get to this point and the adhesive is cured. Speaking of wires, how much wire is attached to this strain gauge? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Typically on these, um, these gauges, uh, we'll add on uh, 10 feet of a vinyl insulated lead wire. Uh, this one looks to be a 30 gauge wire that we've added. Uh, and it'll be about a 10 foot long uh, conductor. Uh, we've got a bunch of other strain gauges, in particular the C4A series gauges, where we'll add on either three foot or nine foot lengths of wire that's also vinyl. So if you're thinking, uh, you know, you're looking at some options, we have those available, in particular on the C4A construction of a uh, strain gauge. How long can the uh, wire be on a strain gauge? Is that about the max right in that area? Not really. Actually, you could run several hundred feet okay. um, of wiring on a strain gauge. Mm -hmm. I, I think the thing that, in my mind, that guides you, there's two issues with that. Number one, the longer run of wire you have, the more it desensitizes the strain gauge. It's got resistance that you're adding that's not strain sensitive. So you have to account for that. And in general, I use a rule of thumb not to exceed 10% of the resistance of the strain gauge. So like these are 350 ohms, you don't want the lead wire resistance to exceed about 35 ohms, and that would quite frankly be a lot. Um, the second issue you run into is the potential for picking up electrical noise because the wire has so much surface area that's exposed. So in some cases, when you start running longer runs of cable, you want to use a twisted and shielded cable to try to reduce sure. uh, noise and interference. All right, so I've actually passed my one minute, and my thumb is actually, uh, I can feel it partially glued onto the, <laughs> partially glued onto the board. So before you that take... That may be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you take a scalpel and you start helping me cut my thumb off, what you want to do is take it and just kind of twist it. And if I take it and twist it, it should release with minimal damage to my thumb. So you see, there's the... There's a gauge installed. One of the great things about using three element rosettes too is that it doesn't matter the orientation. Uh, grid number one is always your reference axis. So you can turn it any direction you want to and still calculate maximum minimum principal strains and direction. 
And really at this point, we let it sit for another two minutes and then we could take the tape off. All right, so we've waited our two minutes. Um, Rick, I think we're ready to take off uh, this gauge installation tape. So I'll kind of start it and try to peel it directly back on itself, exposing the strain gauge. There we go. All right, perfect. Now we got a nice little view of it. Um, and one of the great things about this gauge is notice we, we got a little bit of the flex bonded at the gauge, but the rest of this, you can really maneuver in any which direction you want. You know, I could take it, I could pull it back around this direction. You know, I could pull it down here. I could pull it over here. All the while, this flex circuit is, is um, allowing me to do that. That's one of the great things about it. I, I think probably it makes the most sense maybe to run it uh, down over here. Um, but we get to choose, you know, and, and if this board were going into a fixture, um, a particular one where they, they check the, the electrical contacts, it's called an in-circuit test or ICT tester. A lot of times you'll have little pins that will make... Um, uh, contact points, so you might have to dodge those. And that's one of the great things about this flex. It allows you to bend it around in all different directions so you could dodge those either standoffs or those electrical contact points. But really at this point, we're ready to, uh, really we could go ahead and put on our protective coating. And for this one, I'm gonna leave the, the flex circuit up. So we're gonna take the M coat C now that we got the cap off, and really just put a couple of drops here right around where the gauge is installed. The great thing about M coat C is that it goes on relatively thin. It's an RTV silicon rubber that's got uh, some solvent that we add to it so that it's easy to apply with a brush cap, as you can see. Uh, the other great thing about it is that it forms kind of a tough rubbery coating over the strain gauge without adding any mechanical reinforcement. I think that's important in particular when you start testing non-metallic materials like plastics or composites, or like in this case, a printed circuit board. You really wanna watch what coating you're putting over top of it because some of them could start to add a little stiffness uh, to the board and therefore affect the way the strain field is gonna flow through it. So I like to use this uh, M coat C because once it's cured, it's kind of a tough rubbery coating helping to protect the strain gauge and also, um, you know, minimizes any chance of adding reinforcement. Gotcha. So really at this point, we are, we are basically ready to uh, run the test. I'm going to put a little piece of tape over top of the wires just to kind of help hold them down. You can see how that flex circuit again can, you know, there's a bunch of different options here as far as where we uh, position it. I'm just gonna use a little piece of tape and just kind of tape this guy in place right on top of that printed circuit board. And if we wanted to, uh, we could glue it down if we want to. We could also put protective coating over the top of it. You really have options here as far as how to route these. And it's gonna vary depending on the application and how much room you've got as far as how you, you add a little strain relief uh, for this flex. So in my case, I'm just gonna take a piece of the gauge installation tape they kind of just tape it down right here at the edge of this uh, printed circuit board. And we'll just wait on that M-coat seed to air dry. It takes about 24 hours for every 20 thousandths thickness. So pretty much at this point, now it's just a matter of waiting on the environmental coating uh, to cure. Thank you for taking the time <clears throat> to go through this installation with us with this G1350A. Rick, I appreciate you sitting with me and going through this. Hopefully you, you might have seen something you haven't seen before. Um, and certainly as customers, if you have any questions about strain gauge installations on printed circuit board assemblies or really anything for that matter, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can call Applications Engineering by dialing 919-365-3800 and follow the prompts till you get to Applications Engineering. Or you can contact us through the website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you. And for the BLH product, BLH, www.blhnobel.com for all your weighing needs. Thank you.
Thanks, Ray.